I was digging through one of the mini boxes of stuff over on the side of the shop there, and I ran across this. This is a, a bit of vehicle. I'm not even sure what vehicle. I don't have the rest of it. All I have is this panel. Uh, but it also has ignition switch with no key and a turn signal switch. And this is what I'm going to work on today. my previous video about adding lights to this Jeep, I completely forgot about something. Uh, I'm used to adding tail lights like this. And uh, I wired in the tail light just like I usually do, call the job done. Thing is, these tail lights have a little window on the bottom. Now normally you install the tail lights and that little window uh, lets the light from the tail light shine through and eliminates your license plate. These flush mount ones don't have that. So I'm going to add a license plate light, which will cover up that little hole there too. Okay, now taking a look at the wiring here on the switch, we have two wires that come out, green and yellow. So those should be the uh, right and left signal lights, respectively. And uh, that I should be able to just use the same color code I already have for trailer lights. Then we have a flasher, which this is actually going to blink the power on and off going to the switch. That way, the power going out either side is flashing. And uh, that looks like just power in. Now, it looks like this wire got squished a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down to the good part of the wire, get rid of this bad section. And now, I've got, I've got a standalone turn signal switch, which I hope works. We're gonna test it next. Now, what we've got is a meter set to the beep sound when it connects. So I'm on the power wire going to the switch. Nothing on the yellow. Switch to the other way. Nothing. Nothing. I think these contacts are kind of old and dirty. Oh, there we go. We got a connection. Go the other way, nothing. So, have you ever wanted to see the inside of one of these switches? I didn't actually have a desire to, but we're going to right now. Now, I'm seeing two screws on the back, so we're gonna start there. I don't know how many things are gonna go sprawling, but we will find out. I like the standard hose clamp mounting system. All right, apparently it comes off the other way. Let's get that out of there. Get the wires out of here. Try not to lose the screws. All right. This is what we have. We have contacts and uh, other contacts, which are dirty. So we're gonna clean those up and hopefully that fixes everything. Now this is interesting. It appears that someone has already filled these with solder. I'm wondering if they wore through the contacts and actually tried to repair this once already. Uh, I use that same technique with my uh, slot cars. When the little uh, copper contactors wore through, I filled them up with solder. The problem is, lead had a lot more friction than the copper did and wore out faster too. But for a turn signal, that should be fine. Looks like there's a little pitting in the solder, so I'm just gonna take a file and reshape that. Okay. Now that little board's riveted down, so I'm not pulling it up. Let's see if we can clean it up in there. Polishes your fingernails too. All right, got nice clean connectors inside, clean connectors here. Let's put it back together and see how it works. It looks like there's two different detents. This 
ball could go, I wonder if that is a hazard light. I wonder if you push and pull the entire switch out to give yourself a hazard light function and connect to both of them. I did not try that before. So let's put this together and see if I wiggle that where I'm at. You know, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bend these just slightly. So we're just going to bend them down, give them a little more tension riding across these little uh, pads here. Connected to the power. They should have nothing. 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 Turn. Still nothing. Okay, we've got our right turn signal again. Let's see if we have left. Yep, we got left. Now we know it has a new position. Pull it out. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's connected to left and right. Yep, pulling out is, turn is hazard lights. Pushing in is regular motion. So I think we got a fully functional switch here. Let's go ahead and install it. Installation is real easy, it's a hose clamp. So we're just gonna tuck these wires in past the column here. It'll just be easy to do right now. Then this goes right around here. There we go. All right, let's see. Yep, it goes right into my knee when I use the clutch. Looks like adjustment is pretty easy. You just loosen the clamp, rotate, we'll just stick it up there. There's nothing that says that the turn signal has to come out straight out. I could put it straight up and down if I wanted to. Okay. <coughs> Knee is clear. It's around where I expect it to be. I think we're good there. So now we got some wiring to do. Need to lengthen the wires a little bit. Found an old section I cut off trailer wire. So we're just gonna remove this brown wire that we don't need. So now I can run this from the switch to the taillight connections and everything will match. And these are connected together so it'll look neat. There goes the solder. Pro tip, don't hit your hand with the heat gun, it hurts. Okay, now let it cool down. We should be good. Okay, I got room in all my grommets from when I did the uh, headlight wiring. All right, now here we have the wires that go to my uh, brake lights. Obviously brake lights are really important, so we're just gonna snip those off right here. Uh, right about there. There's that other one. There, there's the brake light wires. Now we're going to connect the turn signal wires. Okay, nothing here. So uh, I never actually tested the flasher. Let's check that. Alright, first thing I do is replace the flasher with a piece of jumper wire. So we should see the wire, the lights just be on all the time if this works. Okay. One side, other side, both. So, so we know the switch is working, and if the flasher was flashing, those would be flashing. Now we're in my electrical parts hoard here. Uh, I'm gonna find, hopefully, another flasher. So of course, I always save all my relays and fuses from any vehicle I take apart. I also found light housing for my, um, this is for my Suburban, I think. Use a standard like push and turn connector, and I'm sure I have one of those. So let's see what I got. Bulbs, bulbs, bulbs. Oh, hey. Fancy LED bulbs. This came off one of those Rec Grand Cherokees. Someone made it fancy. Um, let's see. Oh, wire connectors. Those are mostly just plugs. Uh, hello. All right, well. I found a connector similar to the one I want. This one's a four prong, but I found a complete license plate light. 
Uh, let's get the little window, nice metal. Uh, yeah, forget this one. This one's going on. That'll be easier to mount. And cover up more of the holes in the body. All right, now back to the flasher. Didn't find any of my stash, so we've got to go scavenging here. Luckily, this uh, not another project showed up recently. And uh, let's see what we can steal out of it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks like I've already been here. Uh, but that wasn't me. That was someone who just thinks like me. Let's see what we got over here. We got... Oh, what do we have here? I think we have a flasher. Is it the right kind? Uh, it's a two connector. Darn. I'm going to need a three wire flasher that works. I checked. Uh, the local parts store has it. Uh, they're in stock. They're seven bucks. It's only a few minutes away. Um, so rather than do that, I'm going to take this apart and see if I can make it work. Now, these units are not meant to be serviced. Basically, this whole casing is crimped around this board that has everything attached to it. So what you need to do to take these apart is undo that crimp. A uh, little pair of pliers usually will do the trick. And you just roll it back and keep going around until you can get that um, this board out of there. Now once you have that loose, this just pops right out. Uh, and as you can see by the massive level of corrosion, I believe we found our problem. So uh, let's see if we can fix this one rather than replacing it. I got bad news. I was tracing these connectors to see which contacts to clean and uh, one of those wires isn't connected at all. Looks like it used to go right there where um, it melted off, that sort of melted. I got this moving because there's a bunch of rust in there, but I think it's worth the seven bucks and I'll just buy a new one, unfortunately. Part store website lied. They didn't have the uh, $7 one in stock. Had to go to the high dollar $15.99 one. Um, the good thing about this, it's an electronic one. The other one was mechanical. If you've ever seen a bulb burn out and have your flashers go too fast, uh, that's because the mechanical ones require a certain load in order to blink at the right rate. I've got an electronic one. Uh, this one's compatible with LEDs that have real low draw that act like a bulb that's burned out. So we're going to pop this in and see if we got flashers. Can you guys get anything back there? This doesn't seem to be working. We're just going to pry this apart a little bit here. go and we have basically no user serviceable parts inside because this is solid state but we can see the switch and we can trace where the wires go so let's figure out how everything works here I know for sure I have power at my input here and these are the contacts that should be connecting to those and we're getting no power to any of those contacts so it doesn't even matter if this whole switch moved, it's not even, it wouldn't power anything up if it did. So we definitely have a problem with this uh, brand new flasher. And nothing on any of the outputs. So it's definitely this flasher that's an issue. Also noticing it has a diagram out on here. I'm going to go check this diagram just to be sure my wiring is right. I've got another learn from my mistakes moment. Um, I went to the parts store thinking that all three prong flashers are the same. Uh, basically, if they're the same prongs, they fit in the same socket, they work the same. This is not true. Um, I had to go back and get a different style. On this one, the third terminal is meant for a um, ground. On the other style, the third terminal is meant for an indicator light, which is what I have. So uh, it wasn't a defective flasher, it was the wrong one and it fits in the exact same spot. So, lesson learned. Back to the parts store, ended up with a different type this time. Um, it's see-through, so that's sort of cool. But uh, we're gonna try this one out, and see what we got here. So that's a good sign. We got a light. Got a left turn. Got a right turn. I think we're in business here. 
I like the little indicators with the cast and arrows. It all works. This hole's already been drilled to the wrong size. This is the standard lamp. Yeah, just falls right through. So uh, I'm gonna go and use these little LED lights. These are actually pretty standardized these days. Use a three quarter inch hole, which is almost what this is. And uh, these should be pretty bright, and work pretty well. We're gonna try it out. Worst case scenario, I'm gonna put these in here and then I can put the uh, factory lens right on top of it and we'll see how that works. That's an easy installation. One kind of interesting thing about these lights, um, I find it a little annoying, but uh, the color coding. Now in most automotive stuff, you have red and black. Red is positive, black is negative. And that's pretty standard in automotive stuff. These, which are meant for automotive use, are color coded like a house, where the black is actually your hot wire and your white is your neutral or your ground. So if you hook it up like a car, with black being negative, you will get absolutely nothing. Now if you hook it up like a house, with the white being ground and the black being hot, there we go, we got a light. So keep that in mind, if you ever run across the white and black set, usually black is hot and uh, white is ground. Now obviously I hoard stuff, which means I have lots of old trailer wiring lying around. And in this pile, I found an entire harness for a trailer with the correct connector for the trailer side. And I think I'm gonna use this to hook up the front lights and leave this connector on there. The reason is, I expect failure in this vehicle. Really, how long is this thing actually gonna last? The fact that it keeps bringing me home is kind of surprising. If you do get stuck somewhere, one of the easiest ways to get home is with a tow bar. And if I have all the lights already hooked up to a trailer connector, all I need is a tow bar to hook to this, and um, I can just hook this up to pretty much any vehicle, plug it in, and I have all my lights, it's ready to go. So there's only one place that my cheapness is gonna haunt me here. When I did the headlights, I did a single switch with just one position on and off. So the headlights and the running lights go on at the same time on the same circuit. Uh, normally this would be a two position switch, they're more expensive, but you'd have one position for running lights and the next position for headlights. Uh, if you did that, they're on separate circuits. The reason this is going to be a little bit of an issue is, since they're on the same circuit, when I power up the running lights with the vehicle towing this on the tow bar, it's also going to turn on the headlights. But uh, it only matters at night when you're using running lights. And I'm only planning on using that tow bar in emergency situations, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, worst case scenario, if it's an emergency, I can just disconnect the headlights and I'll be fine there. Now i got to figure out how long to make this wire. And I uh, figure the best way to size it is add a tow bar. I happen to have an old tow bar that I had yanked off a vehicle a couple years back. Of course I kept it. And uh, a few holes later, we're going to have a tow bar mounted here. Yeah, it feels like it'll fit. Kind of centered. Good enough. It fits. Hmm. It's not half bad. Almost leave that on there.
Not bad. Mainly because this plastic is really, really badly sun-baked. Hmm. Maybe just go with the bezel? It's not half bad. This old license plate light will cover a lot of these holes here, and uh, that's nice. I've fished it in here, and it happens these two holes already drilled in here are the exact width I need for this part. So uh, I just bolt it straight on like it was made for it. Gotta love how luck works. I'm gonna cut it in the harness again to add this license plate light, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and splice in a trailer light connector. Uh, this is actually the vehicle side of the trailer light connector, so uh, I can tow trailers. I left myself a little extra wire to work with last time because I figured I'd have to do something else. I always do. I've added the license plate light to the brown wire, which is running lights. I've added the trailer lead to the uh, high circuit where we have the brake and uh, turn signal lights coming on. So uh, that's set there. Then I added the brown and the green for the trailer light connector to the circuit going to the right light. The white wire I grounded to a bolt or to the frame so we can ground the trailer. We've got our tail light back and a little license plate light. So uh, that's all set. Now this trailer pigtail and all the wires in the back here are going to be subjected to the tires throwing a bunch of stuff at them. So I want to protect them. I grabbed my old box of wire loom. Uh, this is stuff left over from other projects. I've got a few different sizes. So I'm just going to install some of that on top of these uh, wires to keep uh, sticks, rocks, dirt, etc. from being thrown at them. And then I'm going to tie it up out of the way. I'll show you on this one because under there it's real hard to put a camera on. Now basically this split loom, you may have used it before, but it can be a pain to try to put it in. What I found, I found you basically want to start it and then slide it on from one spot and just shove the loom over. Rather than trying to feed the wire into it, a lot of times it's just easier to push it. All right, then I'm going to clip it off near the end. We'll slide that into place here. And then a zip tie to make sure nothing comes out as we drive. Install with your favorite tool. And there we go. Now I'm just going to let this hang, tuck it back here somewhere. Um, even if it hits the ground, it'll just flop around. It should hold on pretty good. I'll zip tie the other end of this to something secure under there so it doesn't pull the wires out. Okay, now I'm going to explain to you why I cut up my brake wires. Now let me uh, use my fancy surface here. Get the spider webs off it. And uh, what I had was I had, from the previous video, when I installed the brakes, a circuit that went to each rear light. They went to ground. And we just went positive through the brake light switch and split off to both lights, which works fine for brake lights. But now what I did was add a switch with two positions going to each individual wire of each light. So we have electricity already going this way and this way when I hit the brake light switch. And now I've added electricity going this way and this way. Now if I had left those brake lights connected, when I powered up one side signal light, it would light up that light, but it would also go back to this light. So I had to break that circuit. And by breaking that circuit and preventing it from going back to, through this section here, it allowed the electricity to actually go to each light individually. Now, if you've played electronics at all, you know that symbol. That's a diode. Basically, it's like a one-way valve. So after I cut the line, I'm going to have to add a diode in here to make sure the electricity only goes out and can't go back to the other circuit. 
I want to have the front turn signals working. So I have my light here. This needs to go into this circuit also. Now, if I have this free flowing, I can go ahead and I can power up my individual signal lights. But if I hit the brakes, it'll power up both lights and the both front signal lights. So the front signal lights would be uh, brakes also. And I don't want that. So I need another diode in here to prevent this from backflowing from the brake light circuit back to the front signal lights. So by putting a couple diodes in here, making the electricity only go one way, I can make all the lights work the way I want. Now if you're ever hooking up a trailer to a vehicle that has a separate, let's say a brake and a turn bulb on each side, and you want to go to a trailer connector where you just have two lights like I do here. You can't just put both connected to that light. You need those same diodes in a trailer to prevent it from going back and feeding through the circuit. And this is a good thing because so many people hook up trailers, diodes made for this are readily available. And this is what we need. This is a diode kit that actually is uh, basically meant for this. Uh, it's a Hopkins 48955 and they're available fairly readily. And what they have is they have two inputs and one output. And that keeps these isolated from each other so you don't have power going from one to the next one. And so basically just plug those in. That's going to be right there. Another one right there. Now these come in a four pack with connectors. Um, I only need two for this Jeep, but I have a vehicle that needs a trailer connector fixed and I'm gonna use that to hook up uh, trailer wiring to a Grand Cherokee. So I'm gonna use all of these here uh, real quick. Now this is my brake light lead. This is where it came off the pressure switch and went to the two tail lights. So I added connectors there. I pulled it off because it was a little easier to work on and you could see it better. And then I'm gonna take my diode and that's gonna go on one of the inputs. And then I'm gonna have another diode for the other side and that's gonna go on the other one. This right here is my turn signal output, and uh, I connected that to the um, light for the front turn signal, because that I only want going when it's turn signaling, not when it's braking. So we have green, we're going to go to the green on this one. doesn't really matter on the brake light one, because, uh, you know, that's doing both, but might as well keep it all consistent. Now same thing with the yellow, so this is our left turn. So now we have two different inputs to the high beam. Down here, I have my wires going to the tail light itself, so that goes on the output. And here's the other tail light. That goes on the output. Then I just need to reconnect my brake light switch, which is right down there. And I'll tuck all this up later, but I'm going to make sure it works first. We've got left turn signal. Right turn signal, we have brakes. We've got brakes. Let's try it with our running lights on. We got blinking. We got brakes. So that's all set. We're all good. Now let's see if we can tow a trailer. Got a generic trailer hooked up. Let's see what happens. Here's our right turn. Our left turn, and our brakes. We know the trailer side of the wiring works fine now. What about the being towed side of the wiring? Let's see what happens when we hook it to another vehicle. This is my V8 Grand Cherokee where I did the five speed swap. You've seen it in a lot of videos, doing the swap process, lifting it, all sorts of stuff. Uh, but anyway, it came with a uh, trailer controller from U-Haul. And this is one of those ones that's powered up by the battery. I've never had good luck with these, so I'm going to get rid of this expensive high dollar unit and replace it with a couple of those cheap diodes. Now that previous unit already had wires spliced in here, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and use what's here. I know those connectors aren't preferred, but um, 
they're here and they work. So I'm gonna keep using them till they stop and then I'll fix it. Now that other controller used a red wire for brakes. I used the red wire too. I had to jumper it to the other diode so I had both sides. Uh, so it runs both at the same time. Then the yellow for the turn signal on this side goes to the trailer connector. So the right side signal already had a wire for the other controller, so that's here. And uh, the running lights and the ground just go straight through. A few minutes later, we're all wired up for trailers again. There should be no problems with this one working because there's none of this circuitry here that always seems to go bad. This little red Jeep's all wired up and ready to go by itself, or towing something, or being towed, or an entire weekend of fun in one load. I don't know if that's legal in your state, but uh, it'll tow it and it'll have lights doing it. And I think between that and that, I'm under 3,000 pounds, so I don't think I need brakes either. So uh, I actually think this is sort of legitimate, maybe, eh, who knows. But uh, anyway, at least that Jeep's up and going. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun now that I can actually drive it around on the road and get to the trail a lot easier. I'll feel safe that people behind me will know what I'm doing and won't rear-end me as often. I'm considering the wiring on this thing done, and I'm going to move on to something else. So uh, I'll go on to something else that's fun. You guys keep having fun, and we'll see you next time. Oh, more relays. Ah, what do we have here? Oh, whole baggie full of relays. Nice. Let's put that front and center. I might need that soon. Oh, hello. This is what we're going for. We got stuff.